Do you want to start a business, get out of the office, achieve happiness and success while crushing life? This is Boss to Boss, the place to be for that extra motivation to get up and follow your dreams while learning from the ones who have already done it. And now for your host, Miro Wieslow. Welcome to Boss to Boss. Today's guest is an entrepreneur and founder of Referral Marketing Guru, which is the number one referral marketing training company around the globe. There are offices in Australia, the US and the UK and Michael Griffiths himself travels between them showing businesses how to generate business by using other people's networks, contacts and communities. He currently resides in Sydney, Australia with his wife and daughter. Michael Griffiths, it's a pleasure to have you on. How are you doing today? Yeah, doing fantastic, and thank you very much for having us. Very excited to be here, having this conversation, and be with your listeners. <laughs> yes, yes, we're definitely uh, miles apart, at least a few of them, right? Yeah, uh, <laughs> very, very true, very true. Good, like, uh, what did you say, 7, what is this, 2, 2 p.m.? I mean, we're a good, like, 14, 16 hours? It's a good amount, there, right? There are yeah, thereabouts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but because we're so often in LA, I just tend to go take five hours off and turn day to night or night to day. And that's how I do it easily. <laughs> that's one way. Uh, for everybody tuning in, whether you're listening, uh, watching a video on YouTube, on Facebook, or anywhere on the podcast platforms, uh, make sure to check out michaelgriffiths.com.au. And that's uh, Michael spelled the traditional way. And then Griffiths, G-R-I-F-F-I-T-H-S. I got that right? Spot on. <laughs> dot com dot A-U. It's a, that's a mouthful. <laughs> uh, there you can follow all his social media, all his websites, his referral marketing programs. You can check it all out. Uh, he has the links to everything else in, in that website. You can follow along and uh, take a look. Ah, so... So uh, you're another person that I talked to that used to be a teacher. Yeah. I see. Yes. I see. Uh, so do you think that has something to do with you being in the teaching role now? Yeah, um, most definitely. So when, when I sort of think, and I always thought my life would always just be that uh, teacher. Mm -hmm. And I suppose I went into teaching because really I was – elite level basketball coach. So started coaching representative basketball, which over in the US you call AAU, as mm -hmm. at the age of 10. And I was coaching representative basketball under 10s when I was 10. Uh, went through playing at, a, at an elite level, three knee reconstructions, that was the end of playing, and focused on coaching. So I've been lucky enough to coach at, at national league level here in Australia, been to two wow. Olympics as an assistant coach, was over in University of North Carolina and Tar Heels with the women's program for three and a half years. So that's what I thought I was always going to do. Coach basketball and teaching will allow me to run practices in the morning and run practices of the afternoon, evening, and mm -hmm. sort of teach in between. Um, and after getting just despondent and, and annoyed with the other teachers and, and the system of paperwork, and I just said, I'm, it's no fun. So heck, that's where we went. Well, time to go do something else. And business, um, which is a whole new world to me at that time, came calling and away we went. But mm -hmm. certainly dealing with people, dealing with um, adults, learning how to teach from such a young age is a huge benefit right now. Wow. Um, well, that, that's that's one way to look at it, right? I mean, wow. So you really went all over, huh? You went pretty deep into it in Australia and then pretty deep into it here. I mean, you were for the Tar Heels, huh? I mean, yeah. And, and you guys yeah. got. And, go yeah. Ahead. So I remember 2007 mm -hmm. and being offered University of Hawaii, um, women's program role. And unfortunately, some things popped up at home that we had to come home for. Mm -hmm. But. Uh, but Funny how things happen for reasons, and uh, but here we are eight years later after seven businesses selling six of them, and uh, couldn't be more happier with where we're at and what we're doing and the impact we get to make around the world. Seven businesses, and you sold six of them. That's a little tidbit I purposely left out because I knew yeah. I knew it was going to come up sooner or later. I just knew it. That is phenomenal, phenomenal, and you've done all this in. 
about we would say what 10 years or so yeah first business uh 2008 so just yeah, about right 10, 10 years yeah Wow. What is the secret? I need the recipe right now. I mean, <laughs> we all do. Um, certainly a lot of a lot of being in the right place at the right time, but none of those businesses I had even planned to sell, uh, which was also nice. Really? They sort of opportunities popped up. Uh, we had growing so quickly in all of them that in the end, we sort of became a threat to, to the bigger competition that they went, well, it's easier to buy you and take your clients rather than continue. <laughs> um, and I wasn't overly passionate about those. Uh, they filled a gap. There was a need. Hence, we created them. Compared to this one, uh, I would find this one hard to sell because, yeah, this, this is... Um, my baby that I'm so passionate about in how we help where the others were more of a stock gap. I knew they weren't going to be there forever. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. but, but when I look at if there was a secret, it's how, how do you grow fast? And every single business, we have a, a, a story and a, and a point where it, we went from pretty much a nothing to pretty much having hundreds or thousands of, of customers. Mm -hmm. And we were able to do that with within sort of four, five, six months. So all of a sudden, other people in the industry stand up and take notice and they go, well, we've got a choice. We're either going to try to knock you off or we're going to buy you out. Mm -hmm. And as I said, things just pretty much happen more so by luck than by planning. But um, I'm certainly grateful that that's the way it was. Were a lot of those businesses uh tech based like online based or any brick and mortars uh a combination of them all so our first business was a was a tutoring center so we went to people's to families homes to tutor the to tutor the children mm -hmm. uh the second business was a um organic health product so a sort of an antioxidant powder okay. the third business was skincare mineral makeups the next one was around phone systems and voip which 2010 sort of mm. 10 was still fairly fairly new. Um, then we had jigsaw toy puzzles, and then we had a market, traditional marketing agency, and then we just niched down into referral marketing. Oh, wow. Uh, you could see, though, how everything kind of stems into what you're doing now, and exactly how you grew these businesses and sold them is kind of what you're doing now, right? It Spot all kind of... It all just funneled in and it's, wow, it's crazy how that works, huh? Did you know, uh, like, was there a point that you know that you were like, I have to be running a business. I want to be, you know, in control of something. And you left the whole, you know, organized world, the world of teaching, the world of coaching. W when was that point? Where was that breaking point in your life? Yeah. So even while teaching, I sort of had little things on the side and doing little, little projects here and there. And never really was someone who conformed to, uh, let's call it traditional society. Mm -hmm. uh, I always knew there was more and I always knew that we could do more and uh, running holiday camps from the time I was sort of 13, 14 and, and being able to make money during school holiday time. And so there was always that, I think, within me. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remember we were running a, a, a web a web design company, I think that was about 2007, 2008. Not very well, no idea what we we're doing. <laughs> um, it, it just allowed us to pick up a bit of extra money here and there. And there came a time where it was like, okay, so you can't keep doing all of this. You just don't have enough time. If you're serious about going and making it something, you've got a choice. You either have to take the safety net away and make it happen or just stop doing it altogether. And that's sort of how I operate also. It's if you take a safety net away, I'll make it happen. Um, so I'm very much a, a, a move towards type of person rather than a move away pain type of person. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. very much a, hey, say that if I don't achieve this, 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 you won't have a roof over the head. Well, I'll achieve it tenfold because that's, that's the challenge that you've just set me, so to speak. So... I think it was in there bubbling in the in the years beforehand, and eventually, um, yeah, I sort of still distinctly remember getting to a point where I just finished with a two-hour staff meeting and listening to a bunch of people want to hear their own voices, and I'm just thinking, there's no way I can listen to this for another forty my, more my years. My favorite, my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so we're yes. coming home and, and saying, I can't do this in case of, well, you've got a choice. You, you, you put in your paper tomorrow and say you resign uh, or you be quiet and you put up with it for the next 40 years. And that's all I needed to hear to go, great, I'm out. And um, away we went from there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> wow. Uh, what, what, uh, so now let me, let, me, let me ask you with that, like a follow-up, what is the next big challenge <laughs> that's in your way? <laughs> yeah, um, we're, we're very big at the moment. So I sort of talk about this. Mm-hmm. There's sort of four phases to to business in my belief. You sort of got phase one, which is uh, let's just make stuff happen. You do whatever you have to do to keep a roof over your head, mm-hmm. get food mm-hmm. on the table, do what you have to do. Once you move through that phase to phase two, you're more in a growth phase. You're, you're you're okay, you know you're not going to lose the roof over your head or food on the table, so you can start growing. Then you move to phase three, which is around, okay, so how do I personally make more of an impact uh, with social projects or charities or how do I give back? Uh, then you've got phase four, which I believe where, where we're at is, well, how do we bring our tribe, our networks, our communities together to create even more of an impact? So right now for us, um, a lot of good social projects that mm-hmm. we're doing, uh, lots of lots of fun things. So we're going to operate next year and sort of do a stationary bike challenge where mm. you've got to get a team of three. There's eight teams. It's $3,000 worth of sponsorship that you've got to raise to be able to enter. Stuff like that where we can sort of generate 25000 every time we do it to go to charities and and we're big around supporting underprivileged children that don't have the opportunities of education and Mm -hmm. being able to become the best version of them because of their situation and doing more of that so that's the the sort of the big challenge goal excitement that sort of um is in our world at the moment that's huge and that's so important right now just having there's so many businesses out there so many companies you could you know go to for example but when you do something like that when you have that for purpose that model you're you're talking about right now you know having a greater purpose with the business i uh, i believe that goes a very long way and so it sounds like you're right there right in the stage three going into four kind of thing right so that's the next yeah yeah no agreed and uh, I was saying to someone the other day, well, you can't get there until you put your own mask on first, as they mm-hmm. say in the aeroplane. Um, you've got to make sure that you're right first before you can go and really help other people. So it's very much a, an order you've got to go through. I like that. I, I like that quote a lot. I think we're going to have to uh, post that up somewhere with, with your name. I like that. Even though it's a typical thing that people say, but, you know, it's it's true. You gotta you gotta put on your mask first, and uh, your mask first, yeah. And even though you kind of look back at it and you're like, "Oh man, is that a selfish thing to do?" But then who's gonna put the mask on him, right? Yeah. Or or her, for example. Hmm. Spot on. Uh, did you did you know you were gonna get into this kind of business? Did you know you were gonna do this, or do you think it was just kind of trial and error with everything else you'd done? That that's how you ended up here. Yeah, um, yes, trial and error. I don't think you ever really know, and I don't mm-hmm. think you need to know. I think it's complete involvement, and you've got to just be happy to be on that journey, knowing that you're going to evolve day in, day out, and where that lands you, hey, be happy with that. So um, I suppose there was a few skill sets that we nas- naturally had, mm-hmm. very much a people person, very much good at, at sort of communicating, talking, um, wanting to help people. So there was a few things that were natural skill sets of mine, Mm -hmm. but how we got to where we do, where we're at today and how we help people is very much trial and error that that's the way we built our other businesses. And I remember sitting there in early 2013 and I just received a Another phone call from one of our clients of a marketing agency going, why aren't I on the front page of Google? I went, well, let me just call Mr. Google and ask. Mm. And I was just like, I'm not in control of this. We don't even market ourselves through these ways ourselves. We've got to teach people how we've marketed ourselves, how we've built our business, how we generate hundreds of leads a day without paying a cent for marketing. And that's probably where it all started to click. 
and then since then it's just continued to evolve with processes and systems and how we can do that so even if I sit here today compared to when we were in 2014 where it's just chalk and cheese to how we can help versus how we used to help would you would you say there are similarities here would you say you're sort of like an online version of a BNI have you got that brought up before? Um, yeah, so I've had the pleasure of um, creating some of the bigger B and I's here in here in Australia, oh. and oh, wow. um, so we completely different. Um, so we we don't do anything around networking. I, I guess people come I'm a, to us. I meant more like, yeah, like like a two point oh, like uh, okay. So it is it is different. Okay. Yeah. So so we're probably more about building your systems, building your referral system. So mm -hmm. creating your own referral teams and using your own uh, clients more effectively and using your networks, whether it be online or offline, mm -hmm. effectively how to create conversations, how to build your audience mass on mass through partnerships and finding associations and clubs. And so a lot more than just simply yeah, let's sort of go and network with people. Yes. That whole sort of system behind which has the processes and the plan. So uh, very much, a, I would call it a marketing system, mm -hmm. which just doesn't rely upon Facebook ads or SEO or pay-per-click yes. or direct mail or radio. We substitute those channels out to put in partner channel, network channel, live and leverage channel. So we have other ways that people can then build their top of funnel audience mm -hmm. through ways that people don't have to pay for marketing. That in essence is what we're helping people huh. with. That is so overlooked right now in this, uh, you know, nowadays people are just, you know, we got to pay for Google. You got to pay for Facebook. You got to pay for that. Where there are numerous ways you can do it organically. You can do it exactly, you know, how you're saying um, just by getting out there and making yourself known. There had to be a mistake or two you made along the way. You know, obviously you're you're doing pretty well right now. You you're 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 covering the globe, but along the way there had to be something big that happened that, even though you can go back to it, you can't really change it. It had to happen. It was a good learning experience, but it was tough. What was it? Yeah, um, and don't get me wrong, we I make mistakes still every day. Um, yeah, so and and I'm happy to do so because you you learn you learn from that. And you feel it. You know you're growing, right? Yeah. No, correct, correct. Uh, the 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 number of times that we've stuffed up with with clients work in the past, where we've just had to go, hey, the, we can't do anything other than apologise. Uh, we can do everything we possibly can to make it right, but unfortunately, we stuffed up. So there's been a number of those moments where we've gone, okay. Uh, this was a, a six-figure project, are we pretty much done if they choose that they don't want to pay us because we're stuffed up? So there's been a few of a few of those moments. Mm. Um, so how would you – so you were you took on too many at once and you couldn't hit the deadline is what you're saying? We probably had the – we had the wrong person in our own organisation running that, heading that up. Mm. Um, so in the end, they probably weren't quite as qualified as what they needed to be and – uh, that caused more problems than what, what it needed to be. So if I sort of look at our challenges and our mistakes, they're, they're, around, they're around people, mm -hmm. uh, not having the right sorts of people, not having the right sorts of teams. They're around uh, not understanding. So a number of times it's cost us an arm and a leg because we haven't understood, especially going into other countries where you're not used to the way they do things. Mm -hmm. So I remember being caught once with a, huge hotel bill because what I thought was that that particular thing was completely different in their world and we didn't do a good enough job of clarifying that. So mm. that was a big learning experience that um, <laughs> food and beverage means something completely different in one oh, yeah. country compared to another. So yeah, lots of lots of mistakes. And I said, I'm happy for mistakes to, to take place if we learn the lesson and we make sure that, that it doesn't happen again. Eventually, mm. we have to run out of mistakes. I'm curious though, just because it's th things I deal with, and I know a lot of the listeners that are here that are debating if they should go into entrepreneurship or maybe they are running a small business. When you get into something like that, where you you know you didn't have the right people in place for that project, 
How did you salvage the situation? Did you end up dropping it? Did you just apologize to the, you know, to the customer and client? How did you, you know, neg, neg, like go about that backlash that could have came from yeah. that? Yeah. So certainly, uh, first thing, owning it and, and apologizing. Mm -hmm. And but more importantly, giving them the solution straight away. This is what we're going to do. Uh, in the end, that project probably ended up costing us money rather than the thirty, forty thousand dollars it should have made mm -hmm. because we just got rid of that person that was incompetent, went and got a team who were the best of the best and produced what that what the client needed. And it didn't matter what it was going to cost me, our reputation and them the walking away happy was more important. So in the end, great outcome and they were mm -hmm. over the moon. They didn't know what happened behind the scenes. It's not their problem. Um, it's my problem. All I have to do is continue to show them that, hey, we're fixing it. And I have to sort of be the duck underwater paddling like mad to make sure that it gets fixed. Mm -hmm. So that's that's how that was handled. Um, very much it's, it's on, on the face to them Mm -hmm. being calm hey sorry we stuffed up but this is what we're doing it's about yes. being proactive it's about making sure that they know hey, we're on top of it we're mm -hmm. still on your team we're by your side mm -hmm. and then on the flip side under the water i'm scrambling like mad to <laughs> do whatever i can to make sure that it gets delivered everything is done right and we're not going to have that situation again in a situation like that where you got a timeline uh, pretty right. You obviously had a timeline there, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, did you go and just get some contractors or you know some freelancers like to get something just out? ASAP? Spot on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I was lucky that I had we had a very good tech person around us. Mm -hmm. uh, very expensive, but a very good tech person. So I could go to them, and they've got a team. They had a team of several hundred at that time of mm -hmm. sort of the the best of the best around the globe. Um, and they turned it around really fast and got it back on track. And set, it, it, we went from what would have been a nice little project profit-wise to it probably costing us money, but that is what it is. Um, you, you learn about making sure what questions to ask in future that we get the right sort of people. Mm -hmm. And luckily that's only happened once. And how did you deal with uh, letting th those individuals go that messed up the project? Like, was that was that a hard moment for you? Were you... How how did you deal with that? Yeah, no, that's just a, a, an honest conversation. Um, this is what should have happened. This is what has happened. We've got to get this fixed up. We don't have the confidence that you can get that done. Mm -hmm. So we need to, to part. I, I think the big problem that people have, and it's in all aspects of business, is they bring too much emotion into things. Yes. Um, there is no emotion here. It is what it is. And all we're doing here is making a decision based on logic. So I think when people can base decisions on logic more and keep the emotion out, well, it's pretty simple. It's just a logical decision. And that was that's a big lesson from back then that I think I've continued with the whole way through. Uh, when we bring people on, it's because of logic. When we bring clients on, it's because of logic. When a client is unhappy, let's logically mm -hmm. look at it. It's about removing emotion because when people are emotive about it, well, we're not getting to the logic part, which is the part which helps us solve the, the problem. Is that something that you think you did you learn over time or did you right away were you like that? No, no. You, you learn it very much over time. And you've got to go through a whole bunch of different experiences to learn mm -hmm. it too. Um, you've got to... You, the, the world has to give you opportunities to practice that. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can just naturally have it. So um, I just take, for example, that just the, or coming back from LA just the other day, and LA to Sydney is sort of 14 hours normally. My body's used to that. We're all good. And there was a whole bunch of problems. Just that everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. And it became a 24-hour trip from the time I left LAX to the time I landed in Sydney was 24 hours. Now, I reckon normally um, anyone that was in earshot who were part of the crew or part of the staff would have got an earful. And I was like, well, what's the point? They didn't mean it to happen. They haven't gone, oh, great. I just want to stuff up Michael's day here. So... You learn control 
of emotions and we're all such emotional beings mm -hmm. we can look at anything go look at your your facebook wall right now and you'll see something which will trigger an emotion mm -hmm. whether it be a positive negative or indifferent and it's well how do you control that and it's about consciously being aware that business isn't about emotive decisions it's about getting to logic and trying to run a business on logic rather than emotion wow okay yeah i, I swear it's like you're it's like it's like i per, it's like we did this interview on purpose right now because it's such a big thing i'm going through myself uh having to let go of a few people in my company here and uh someone people that were very valuable you know and it's definitely something that i had to go through and uh, i was like you know I was at a moment that I was like, man, like these are not easy decisions to make. And I realized I did put emotion into it. I did. And I'll, I'll admit that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's that. How long do you think that took you to kind of get over that? Yeah. Those moments? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's an ongoing process. I think mm -hmm. we can always get better at it. Um, depending on how emotive a person is, is probably how, how long it takes them. So yeah. it took me a number of years to probably get to a point now where I can consciously go, okay, just breathe, take emotion out of it, and let's logically work through this. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm definitely going to... Definitely gonna re-listen to this uh, on my own time <laughs> again. Um, well, no, that's that's some great stuff. But for for the person, the average, the listener, um, if they're in the same position as I was a year and a half ago, sitting there in my cubicle, you know, listening to twenty bosses, not sure if this entrepreneurial world is for me. Do I go out there? Do I try to pursue a management position? Do I try to, you know, lead a company? What would you tell them if this is for them or not? Yeah, great, great. Um, so the first thing, whether you're an employee, a business owner, an entrepreneur, whatever you want to, to put yourself as, you are your own business. You are always your own brand and you are always trying to get yourself to a higher level. Mm -hmm. So I think you've got to see that too. So I talk to organizations and employees. You're not an employee. You're your own business within that organization. So that's just the first thing I want to, to touch on. Mm -hmm. Second thing is, it's too short. Life is just too short. If you're doing something that you are not happy doing, you need to do something different. There is no point. Don't sit turning up, doing the same thing day in, day out, and not being happy. There are just too many opportunities in this world to be able to do something that puts a smile on your face. And whether that be become an entrepreneur, whether that be find a different role, whether that be go and do something different on the side until you finally make it, whatever it is, just ask yourself, am I happy? And if you're not happy, well, there's only one person who can change that, and that's you. So I think that's, that's probably more of a question than mm -hmm. should you be an entrepreneur or not. There are unbelievable people who aren't entrepreneurs that pretty much are because they see themselves as their own entity within that organization. So when I look at most of our team, I give them ownership of their area. I want you to be the boss of that area. Mm -hmm, Don't mm -hmm. see that you're with us. This is part of your world too. And I think when you have people that can empower you like that, but at the same time, you're going to be thinking like that yourself, there are unbelievable opportunities out there, whether that be to do things yourself or with somebody else bottom line ask yourself are you happy and if the answer is no well what can you do differently don't see yourself as someone who just turns up nine to five see yourself as your own business how do you get to the next level or how do you impress somebody else um, enough that they're willing to give you a go somewhere else mm -hmm. i think there's a bit of a myth that you've got to have certain um, credentials or degrees or not in today's world you don't no. I look at people who are part of my team none of them have a degree in terms of what they are doing as long as they are a great people person and they have a few of the more personal qualities I'll teach them everything because I want them to do it my way anyway not how they did it for the last person so we, we are in a society now where there is just so much choice, so much freedom, so much ability to do things all over the globe. Uh, to think that 
I, I think the probably the furthest you're away is like a like a Sydney to London, which is 22 hours. But wow. like that would be like the furthest you're away from any opportunity, and mm-hmm. that's not much. It's not even a day to be able to be in front of a new opportunity. So just change the thinking and just simply go, hey, am I really getting the most out of the life that I want to be? And if the answer is no, yeah, whether it's your own business, whether it's getting becoming an entrepreneur, whether it's just becoming um, into a different role that makes you happier, just do something different. Hmm. That is that is such a great way to look at it. You really uh... – you're really, yeah, you're really making me think about it. So I'm sure you're making a lot of listeners think about it. And no, I, I love that perspective. And now on to our favorite, the listener's favorite segment of the show. Welcome to the round with no up, name because they're all taken. <laughs> all right. Well, here we go. So the, the rules are easy. The rules are easy. You get five seconds to initiate an answer to each one of my questions. You may know some of the questions. You may not. I'm gonna throw some curveballs. I'm gonna get you thinking. I know it's bright and early over there. I want. I want you. I want you walking out of this all hyped up, ready to go. If 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 we don't get the questions out in time, my producer is lurking somewhere in the background. He gets he gets a little mad at me. So hopefully he doesn't come out and you know we don't have to deal with him. That being said, you ready to go? All good. Let's do it. All right. What is your favorite book? The Pumpkin Plan. Your favorite sports team? Ooh. Uh, probably New York Yankees. All right. It's interesting choice. Global, global. Is entrepreneurism a fad? No. If you were stranded on an island, what is the one item you want with you? Uh, my family. That's a that's a that's a good safe answer. <laughs> if if uh, regarding audio, spe- specifically podcasts and audiobooks, how do you feel? Do you think they are the future? Yes or no? Yes. How do you feel about socks and sandals? Uh, no. <laughs> how do you drink your coffee? I actually don't drink tea or coffee at all. No caffeine. No. Is there one item that you consume every day? It could be something you drink, eat. Maybe it's something that you wear that you need every single day to keep going. Uh, always drink my green juice. Do you make it yourself? Yes. What do you put in it? Kale, spinach, cucumber. Uh, pick a different lot of fruit. So it might be an apple, banana, mango, uh, berries, and then mixture of nuts, turmeric seeds. Ooh, I want me one of those, man. If I if I see you anytime soon, I'm waiting for a shake. All right. Was, <laughs> it would have been easy. Done. You could have had an easy one with coffee, but now you know. Now now we need a shake. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, we'll have one for you if anything. If you had unlimited amounts of money and you could start up any business, but you have to start up a business, what would be the business you would start up right now? I probably wouldn't be doing too much different to what I'm doing. Probably just just making more of a social impact along the way. Okay, okay. Well, that's a great answer. And you survived. I survived. We're both still here. We made it. We made it. Mic drop. Uh, entrepreneurism is a fad. You want to elaborate on that question, on that answer? Yeah, so... It's a term, so I get that it's uh, it's just what people call themselves, and and it's just simply language. But I I don't have a problem with people calling themselves that, or a business owner they can call themselves whatever they want. I think that entrepreneur, with it not being a fad, is there is groups of people all around the globe mm-hmm. who have a way of thinking, and the thinking is to me what determines that entrepreneur type mindset. So. It's thinking around how do I leverage better? How do I get myself with multiple pillars of income? How do I remove myself? It's not a matter of just going, well, I was a physio working for somebody else and now I have my own business and I'm just still working the same amount of days mm-hmm. and time. It's it's a thinking around 
bigger and better and without me and what are different opportunities and how I get fingers in other pies. But at the same time, you can't have fingers in lots of pies until you get one pie cooked and, and going. So um, I certainly don't think it's just a fad. I think it's a way of thinking that brings a group of people together that sit under that umbrella. It's a good way, good way, good way of looking at it. I like that. Well, Michael Griffiths, everybody that's uh, that's listening, want to uh, learn more, uh, make sure to check out michaelgriffiths.com.au. That's Griffiths spelled G-R-I-F-F-I-T-H-S. Uh, and then do you have anything going on right now? Any promotion, uh, any uh, like maybe events you're, you'll be speaking at or any uh, any certain, uh, I guess, course or any soft thing that you're uh, promoting? Uh, probably best thing for people to do where we can certainly add some value and, and help straight away. Uh, we've, we've got a simple nine point referral game plan. So getting referrals into your business and using your networks more effectively, that sort of goes through nicely. Uh, nine things that you can do to be able to generate more referrals. And you'll find that on that website, michaelgriffiths.com.au. Uh, it's pretty much the first thing that you'll see to be able to grab your nine point referral game plan. All right. Awesome. So, uh, boss to boss listeners, be sure to, uh, be sure to get your nine point referral program at michaelgriffiths.com.au. Check that out. Let us know what you think. We're uh, curious to hear more. And, uh, it's been a pleasure having you on Michael. If uh, the mic is yours, if you have any closing thoughts, uh, it's all you. Nah, fantastic. <laughs> great to be with, great to be with you. Great to be with your listeners. Uh, certainly looking forward to, promoting this out and, and sharing out with to our networks too the great stuff that that you're doing so great to be able to connect and be on with you today it's been a pleasure we'll be talking again soon that is all for this episode of boss to boss your next step is to visit boss to boss.com where you will find proven techniques followed by professionals to help you make that next step Again, that is boss, the number two boss.com. And remember, the time is now.